Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. If you are interested in learning more about Claris Studio, perhaps you are brand new to the Claris platform, then I think this course is an absolute must for you because you'll learn so much about the platform in so little time. The course is roughly four and a half to five hours long, but within this course, you will learn how to get started, how to get connected, how to build forms online without any prior experience. Those forms can then collect data or produce data in the form of dashboards, Kanban boards, spreadsheets, and it's just a wide world of opportunity for you. Now, you'll also learn how to connect Claris Studio with Claris Pro, which is also known and has been known as FileMaker Pro for years and years and years. So even if you are a person who has a ton of FileMaker experience, but you really don't even know the first thing about Studio, then this course is also for you because you'll get started right away on the right foot. And once we show you how to make those connections between Claris Pro and Claris Studio, the world opens up with tons of opportunities, the ability to make amazing dashboards online, just so much great stuff. And there's more stuff on the way all the time from Claris. So, to get started, you would go to Productive Computing University and enroll in the course called Mastering Claris Studio. I've taken the liberty here to include an excerpt from one of the lessons in the course so that you can get a flavor for what it is that we're talking about and our teaching style, and we hope you enjoy it. So thanks again for your interest, and now on to the lesson. In this lesson, we look at the dashboard view with some advanced charting options. Let me go take a look at a dashboard that I've been working on. It happens to be from the sample data. And when you first get this dashboard, you might notice that it's drawing just a single column of data, just a single type of data. In this case, the type of enrollment class, whether it's coding, cooking, horse riding, and so forth. There's an option here, which wasn't explained in the previous videos because it's a fairly new feature. I'll click on this and we see this subtle Y access option which allows us to add a data series. Let me click on that. And automatically you see it's drawing a couple things at the same time, still focused around the type of class, but we can change the data. So in this case, I want the age and not the sum of the age, but let's say the median age. And now let's take a look at that. So over here in the red is the total class count for advanced sailing, but here, is the median age of 14. And as I hover over this, my tooltip is a consolidation of both pieces of data at the same time, which is nice. Let's go back here and see what other options I have. I have the option to move it around. So if I want age before enrollment, I can do that. We put that back. And then we can change what we count or how this is counted. Standard deviation, range, max, min, median, average, and sum. And I'm not limited to two. I can actually go beyond two. And of course, some of this may not be as relevant or charted in the same way. I mean, in other words, this data may not be appropriate to chart at the same time like this, but it just proves that you can do it which is a nice, powerful feature for charting. Now that I have multiple pieces of data displayed on the Y axis, I can go back into the configuration and choose this option, which allows me to stack the bars. Now the bars are stacked in a single column, giving me yet another way to look at the data depending on the situation. All right, and that's the bar chart with extended options for Y axis. Let me delete this last one here and I will go to the bottom of my sheet and click Add Object, and this time select something new here, which is called Combo Chart. And now this automatically creates a chart with two ways to plot your data. Now, obviously I'll be changing the data here so that it has a little bit more meaning, but you can already see I've got a bar and a line happening simultaneously. So let's adjust the options for that. Instead of going to student, let's go to camp class. This will get us something similar to what we had before where it's counting the number in the class. Eight, four, three, just like this. Eight, four, and three. Now let's go look at what the line is drawing and do the same thing. This time we'll pick age 
and median. And now this is the same data as the top chart, except instead of having two bars, we have a combo of a bar and a line. So line graphs are particularly good at displaying things over time, and bar charts are particularly good at displaying comparisons between two items in general. You'll also note that there's two scales happening, which makes the combo chart more powerful than this chart. You can already see that cooking, represented by a record count of three, is not well represented. It's fairly small in the graph. But here, cooking is a little bit higher in the graph relative to the other amounts, and that's because the scale is 0 through 8 here on the left. But here, the scale is 0 through 20, and the reason why the scale has to be 0 through 20 is because it has to chart the median age of 17 for the cooking class. So by default, in order to fit these two items, we have to go with the most max amount in order to chart it. But in a combo chart, we're not restricted. Why? Because we have two scales, one on the left and one on the right. The right scale is the 0 through 20 that we see up here. And because it's a combo chart, I can have two scales at the same time. So that's what makes the combo chart not just the fact that we're, we've got lines and bars, but also that the data scales relative to the items that you're charting. Let's go here and take a look at this other little feature, which doesn't pop out you, at you at first, but you can decide if you're going to go plotting everything on the left, like it was originally up here, 0 through 20, and then we have the same situation happening where cooking is fairly low on the graph because the scale is 0 through 20 again. Or you can plot this on the right, and that way you have one on the left, one on the right, and that's dictated here by these directional L's showing the side of the chart. We could plot them both on the right if we wanted, but we'll do left and right. And then down here, you have the option of doing either a bar or a line, and that goes for the top as well, a bar or a line. So you could have two lines if you wanted and do it this way. And I can do yet another y-axis and do the days for the start date. Not the best piece of data to display, but now we can see, wow, I've got multiple things happening here, two lines in a bar, and I suppose the scale may not work out right here, but I could do a record count bar, and now we have two bars and two lines happening in our chart. So we're getting pretty sophisticated here, and it hasn't been that difficult to manipulate this. Having the two scale option, 0 through 28 in this case, and 0 through 20, is extremely powerful because it allows us a fighting chance to keep all of our information on a single chart being displayed relative and scaled appropriately. They all have the labels down here, as you can see. And you have options down here to override those label names like this. And don't forget, you can filter this as well. Add a condition if you want only those that happen within a certain date, let's say, or a certain cost, like only show greater than or equal to $1,000, and there's nothing. 100 dollars. Yeah, that's better. So you can filter this as well. So that concludes our lesson in advanced charting. In this lesson, we learned how to add multiple y-axis points for our data, as well as using the combo chart, which gives us the ability to scale to calibrate both on the left and the right side. I don't think it's ever been easier to create charted data in a Claris product up until now. And we are already in the web browser, which makes distribution a snap. Thanks again for joining us on this lesson. You can find out more at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. The name of the course is Mastering Clara Studio, and the link is in the description.